guys, I'm Kenny, and today we're talking poke. Originally meaning chop in the native Hawaiian language, that's basically all poke is, fresh chopped fish. Started thousands of years ago with the native Hawaiians, was improved by the immigrants in the 1900s, and today is enjoyed all around the world. It's one of Hawaii's most iconic dishes, definitely one of my favorites, and today we're gonna be checking out the best ways to get it, starting right here at its birthplace, Honolulu's historic Chinatown district. When the word Hawaii is brought up in conversation, often conjures up images of hula dancers, mai tais, sunset cruises. But what a lot of people don't realize is, before that, Hawaii was a land of immigrants and plantation workers. Let's rewind the clock back 200 years ago for a quick history lesson. When some of the first European sailors arrived to the Hawaiian Islands in the late 1700s, one of the first things they noticed was the immense agricultural potential. Rich volcanic soil, year-round sunshine, warm rains made magical growing conditions. So they decided to introduce pineapple, coffee, and the biggest crop at the time, sugarcane. The issue was that planting and harvesting all of these different crops was very difficult and labor-intensive work. So the next step in this process was shooting across the seas to start importing tens of thousands of immigrant laborers from Japan, China, Korea, and the Philippines one boat of which actually brought my great-grandparents from Japan to the island of Maui in the early 1900s, making me a yonsei, fourth-generation Japanese. But the biggest labor force was from China. In a 1900 census of a population of the entire island, it was found that the Chinese laborers actually made up 53% of the entire island's population. 53%, that's one in two. Bruh, that's a lot. And after their contracts ended, many ended up staying in the Hawaiian Islands and opening up their own small businesses. And thus, Chinatown was born. And Hawaii was fast becoming the cultural melting pot of the Pacific. Now the interesting thing with a lot of these places is that they originally started out as stores that were selling different variations on pork recipes. Pork's super huge in the Chinese cuisine and with the abundance of pigs we have here on the island has become very popular in Hawaiian food culture as well. So I just wanted to show you guys, boom, this is the selection that you're rocking with, right? We have all kinds of pig organs, intestines, and char siu, a style of Chinese preparation. Guys, we've made a quick pit stop because I saw something I had to show you. Let me introduce you to the best fruit in all of Hawaii. This little guy right here is lychee. Only available in the summertime and this is a real fond childhood memory for me. We had a huge tree of these in my grandfather's backyard and they would all rain down and litter the roof of his house. So he would pay us kids five cents for every single lychee that we picked. You know, if you pick 200 of these little guys, you can make 10 bucks a day. Not a bad gig and you got fresh, juicy lychee at the end of the day, too. So let's crack this guy open. I'm really bad at this, don't try this at home. Get a little tool if you're doing this, but I'm just gonna uh, or nail into it with the teeth. There you go, nice and juicy. Do you see all that juice dripping off? So you're gonna take off the shell. Boop, boop. Get right on in there, okay? Now the important thing to remember, there is a seed. Don't swallow it or you're gonna grow a lychee tree out of your belly button, true fact. <laughs> now 
Many poke shops in Chinatown started as general stores by immigrant workers that then grew and evolved over time to use the surplus of seafood at their disposal. Now we're going to take a look at a place that is specialized in seafood from day one, Nikos. Nikos opened in 2004 as the new kid on the block. The restaurant was started by French chef Nico Chez, with the specific intent of showcasing Hawaii's fishing industry. Featured at Pier 38, the restaurant has the luxury of sitting right across the street from Hawaii's one and only fishing auction, where local fishermen will haul in their catches every morning. With poke, the most important aspect is the freshness of the ingredients, and nowhere has higher quality fish than Nikos. So we're located at Pier 38. This is where the restaurant's from. And you can see in the background, we have all the fishing boats. And they bring the fish to Hawaii through the fish auction, which is right behind us. We buy our fish every day at the fish auction. And we pick and choose what we want, the quality of the fish, and then we're gonna cut it right there, bring it over to the restaurant, same day it's served. If you go back to 2004, it was nothing around here, nothing. The fish auction was just built. Everything was starting. Nobody knew about PF38. So I was like, ah, okay, well, we can try. Slowly, people start to get it. And then we have a few write-ups on the local newspapers. Sure, and then, sure. then next thing you know, by 2010, the line was outside the door, all around the building. Wow. We couldn't keep up. And then, of course, the poke that you guys looked at, you know, yes. it's, I, I eat poke every day. You just cannot, <laughs> it's like candy, you know, looking you at it both, like, yes. like ah, I can't eat, but this is just too good. And I hire most, the best people to take care of that business, the oh, fish market, like Liwa and the, my, my fish buyer, Ricky, and, and they just know what they're doing. They're doing a beautiful job and, and this thing is going like great. Well, dude, you've sold me. I'm starving. I think awesome. we're going to go feed the crew right now. Congratulations on your success. Thank you so much for taking Thank the you. time. Take care. Nice to see you. Aloha. Now that we've talked about the origins of poke and where to get it, the only thing that's left is to make it. And for that, we've taken a trip to one of my favorite spots on the island, the Cavella Bay Banyan Tree. Originally the national tree of India, banyans were introduced to Hawaii in 1873 as a gift from Protestant missionaries returning from India to the sheriff of Maui at the time. In Hindu and Buddhist culture, which are very prevalent in the islands, banyans are seen as a symbol of immortality because once a tree plants its roots, it'll continue to grow for hundreds and hundreds of years. There's even one at the famous Iolani Palace that was a gift from Indian royalty to David Kalakaua, Hawaii's last king in the 1880s. Personally, the banyan tree might be my favorite because it's big, beautiful, super fun to climb, and it serves as a true example of what a melting pot Hawaii is. Not only in its food and its people, but right down to the plants in its soil. To help us in making poke, I've enlisted the help of today's very special guest and my good friend, Chef Martin. Originally born in Munich, Germany, Chef Martin has lived in the United States for 25 years, where he's become a world-class chef and has cooked for A-list celebrities such as Robert De Niro, Antonio Banderas, Sylvester Stallone, and Heidi Klum. Today, he's agreed to divulge his original poke recipe with us. Chef, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Now let's talk poke. I understand you have your original recipe for us today. Yes, uh, I got the original recipe from uh, 
The Green Capulani Hotel that was my first uh, job out here on the island. So it's all fresh ingredients. We have the fresh cucumber, the fresh jalapeno pepper and the fresh ginger in it. Uh, that's the only thing that's different to the regular shoyu poke. What does that add? How does that change the flavor of I the I think it, it, it refresh the flavor of the, the ahi. Because when you have yellowfin ahi, and uh, here we have the only last Pacific fish market on the island. Really? And uh, in the morning they auction all the fish off and um, like 80% goes to the mainland or to Japan. That's our biggest uh, buyers. Correct. And then 20% stay on the island for the local uh, sushi bars, and the poke joints and all that. And, uh, you, and when you really have time, you can go down there and you, you pick your own filet and, uh, and then go, you go from scratch. And I think that's the freshest way when you, you see the boat unloads the fresh ahi and two hours later, you're cooking it at home and make yourself some poke. The main thing with poke is that you gotta have fresh ingredients, right? Since it's uncooked, since it's fresh fish, yes. you need to have the freshest source. And when we say ahi, of course, ahi being the Hawaiian word for yellowfin tuna. And these guys aren't just your standard fish, right? Chef, if you've been to the auction, you'll know that some of these guys grow up to be like 400, 500 pounds of fish. They're getting huge. Like, it's like, they have like cranes to lift them off the, the boats Seriously, and they put yes. them in the trailer and then with the trailer on ice into the hull. Yeah, sometimes when you see the boats dragging the fish back into the harbor, the boats are like this with their noses just coming up out of the water because the fish is weighing so heavily on the back. So let's jump into uh, what we're doing today. How would you describe the flavor of your recipe, Chef? I think the flavor of the recipe is, uh, is it's simple, but with all the fresh ingredients, it's like it melts in your mouth and uh, like a kimchi salad, but with fresh fish. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I look forward to trying it, man. I'm super excited. Great. Let's jump into it then, shall we? Yeah. Okay, we have a nice ahi yellowfin mm -hmm. steak here. That's from the middle of the fish. You have to see it looks like this, and then that's the tail. Ah, and, okay. so, uh, so what is the difference in uh, taste or flavor between those So two this is it's more like a tuna steak. When you go in a restaurant and you buy yourself a tuna steak, you can use any ahi for the poke, but this is more a poke cup. So they give you the tail, but it's the same fish and the same grade of fish because they grade the fish on, in the auction, and then now we are at the finished product. Right. No? So tail end of the fish is better for making poke specifically. Yes. You just have to see how you cut it. Right. So you got to cut against the grain. And now why is that, Chef? Why because you, you see those white bands in here? Yes. And when you cut against the grain, you can't see them no more. Uh, now what is that white stuff? Bristle? Fat? It's, uh, it's really the muscle what moves the muscle. Mm. You know? And so now we make nice half inch pieces, cubes. Nice bite-sized chunks there, right? Yep. And uh, it's very important to have a sharp knife. Sure. Sure, and a steady hand as well. That too. You see the cut in the fillet? It's nice. And even with the fillet, you're going against the grain? Yes, you gotta go against the grain because it flakes up. You see how it flakes up? And then it's gonna fall apart. And you don't want that. Because when you mix it, and you can overmix poke, and people think you can. And uh, you will see on the end that this has gonna be not foamy, it looks so fresh and you're gonna love it. Uh, right. That is the problem with a lot of places, you know, that make poke. Sloppily, you see a lot of that white yeah. kind of like gristle on there. So put this all in the bowl. And now we go to the recipe. We uh, first add the ginger, fresh ginger. Now, what does the ginger do for the flavor and the taste? The ginger, like a lot of people go with ginger powder, but I think fresh ginger has, has when you really chop it small, you can eat it and you don't have to cook it and you have that, that super gingery flavor. I love it. So this is just raw ginger? Yes, here. raw ginger. And then we go with uh, jalapeno, green jalapenos. Why and uh, because fresh jalapeno, like the spice is good, but it's not overpowered. And you add all this to bring the flavor of the ahi out. Then we go with cucumber. Okay, why the cucumber? Cucumber is like a like cucumber salad would be a nice side dish on it. But when you add a little bit in it, it like it freshens it up and it's very easy to eat. Mmm, I see. Green onion? Why the green Maui onion? Green onion and Maui onion. Maui onion is a, like a sweet Maui onion. Uh, it grows out in Maui. When you eat Maui onion, you're not gonna smell like onion. It's a very smooth eating. Not overpowering. Not overpowering. Then we go with soy sauce, shoyu sauce and a little bit of sesame oil. 
Now are those two for flavor, consistency? This is really the marinade, when you really want to say it that way. And now you mix it a little bit before you add the Hawaiian salt. Because once you add the Hawaiian salt, the salt and the protein of the fish, it can foam up because the protein is going to turn white. And that's when you go in a store and the sushi or the poke is sitting too long. And then you see it gets white foamy or it got over mixed or something like that. What is the difference between the specifically Hawaiian salt and regular table salt? Hawaiian salt, it has a bigger grind and so like it's not melting that fast. So when you take a regular table salt, it's first manufactured salt from somewhere. Here this is like out of the sea. And uh, the pink salt is like because the lava and from the, from the mountains. And so uh, it's perfect. That's why they use Hawaiian salt. We are in Hawaii and I think you should use the local stuff and make a perfect product. So the basic idea of using the Hawaiian salt doesn't melt as fast and it's not going to create that gristle on it. Yeah. Now we fill up the blade. And again, very important to not overmix, correct? Yes. You see the nice pieces? Oh my God. It melts right there. So now, put this on side, put a little bit of sesame seed on top. It's so easy and uh, when you really have the right fish, the right knife and don't over mix it and you can't fail. What is the most important part of preparing poke? First, to find the right fish and don't fix it before your friends who want to eat the poke arrive. Don't make it early. Yeah, don't, don't pre-cook the, yeah. the poke, you know? <laughs> Made to order. <laughs> Made to order. Yeah. Now, what do you look for in a slab of ahi when you go to the fish auction? No, I'm going to ask her where it's from and uh, if she got it from the auction. And uh, let's some of the avocado here. And that's the finished dish. And then uh, I normally go for the tail side because I see when it was a bigger fish, the tail end is really a nice fillet part. And so I really can even cut me one, two fillets off before I, I'm going to take the poke. And then it's like, really go to the store, go to a little store, go, there's so many poke places out there and they really make the bowl as you go there and said, I want this in my poke and I want this in my poke and they make it right by order. Beautiful. Well, Chef, thank you so much for this recipe. Thanks for taking the time to be out here today. Uh, I'm going to head over to the beach. So I appreciate you so much. I give you this blade and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Now, one of the other cool things about Hawaii is that it was used as a set piece in a lot of big budget Hollywood movies. We're talking Pirates of the Caribbean, the TV series Lost, and of course, everyone's favorite, Jurassic Park. Do you guys hear that? That's a big, beautiful raptor coming out of the trees right there, probably being attracted to the smell of the poke. So what we've got to do is sneak our way around to the beach, but we want to make as little noise as possible. So we're just going to kick off the slippers right here. Don't worry, we'll come back for them later. And we're just going to start sneaking through the woods. Quiet as can be. You know what? They're coming a little bit quicker, so we're going to pick up the pace just a little bit. OK, they're gaining on us, so we're going to start breaking maybe into a full-on blitz. Uh, everyone for themselves. Ah! So we've managed to escape from the raptor. I'm about to whack this poke. We hope you guys have enjoyed our first expose of the island. Make sure to join us next week when we'll be doing a deep dive of the entire North Shore, checking out the food truck scene, exploring all the best surf beaches, and we'll be joined by a local surfing legend. Until we meet again, guys, ahui ho.